So a while back, like more than two years ago, I made a video going over every episode of the Patrick Star Show and ranking them all. That video has gotten a bit outdated, there was like 20 something episodes and now there are like 3 times that with more airing right now, so we gotta catch up. Today we're gonna go through as much of the second half of season 1 as I can before developing schizophrenia. You are traveling to an aquatic dimension. So starting off the second half of season 1, we have a tidal zone episode, which basically means it's gonna be making even less sense than usual. Are you wonderfully talented, Captain Patrick's guest is his space character we have seen before, and this shark dude that was there as well. Outer space? Out her face? No. The humor is on par with season 14 to be honest. Patrick starts mechanicing around with the captain and accidentally shrinks everyone. Uh, here you go! Now they are very small, which is honestly a good concept for an episode of this show. The <laughs> they float around in the toilet on donuts and almost get eaten by the other toilet that's alive. Then we see what Grandpat is up to. <laughs> Now he is pissed, and uh, when he sees the family, he thinks they are vermin that he's gonna exterminate with his bad breath. Where'd they go? You'll be safe in here. Why is the continuity better in this show than the main show? Patrick starts eating all the food before the door rings. Now they're gonna teach Grandpat a lesson. Grandpat scared our new friends away. This time he's gone too far. Bro, he thinks y'all are vermin. He's justified, if anything. Like, just reveal yourself instead. <laughs> Not that I'm on his side or anything. He's mad annoying. But how is he supposed to be the villain? Bro just wants a clean, non vermin affected house. Hi! The amazing guy uh, from Modern SpongeBob, he likes us amazing, is here and he has shrunken them down even more to save them from harm. Door is the place to be! Schman Door is fine dining! This episode got some good concepts, I'm not even gonna lie. There's no singing allowed in Schman Door! Grandpat gets teleported to Egypt as it's now time for him to go invade the main show to mess with the continuity. Jumbo grow plant food! It's time to grow The Jumbo Grow only grows plants and everything else gets shrunken by it, so now they are with the molecules before taking a shortcut. I'm just gonna try to ignore how much this confuses the timeline stuff and everything, because uh, it's a Tidal Zone episode, um, yeah. <laughs> this episode was actually kind of enjoyable for the first episode after my long hiatus of avoiding this show. Patrick marries a cake and is about to eat it before his long lost evil twin cousin Fitzpatrick jumps out of it. He ruined our big wedding scene! <sighs> Relax, Quidina. Everyone eats the cake, Fitzpatrick reveals his evil plan, and then they go to Goofy Goobers. Hey there, kids, who ruined your day? Patrick Star! Patrick Star! Messed up your music, took your ice cream away! Boys, slow down dropping all that BS music. This is some ass. It's cool to have the mascots back though. <laughs> Patrick, I saw what you did. You are banned. This plot is so generic and just annoying to watch. 
The evil twin doing stuff that the real twin gets blamed for is something I've seen a thousand times and like 999 of those times it's just... it just sucks. Secret stash of comic books that I don't own yet! Ooh. I like uh, this comic book store scene. Um, it has some nice references and callbacks. Uh, who had the big idea to put Castle in my way? It is my smile faded so fast after seeing Bubble Bass. I do like this art style for the backgrounds a lot, though it's very similar to an earlier episode. It's probably in the same timeline. <laughs> the plot is even worse here because not only is Patrick too stupid to know what's going on, he also is just he just don't care because he isn't aware of his surroundings. Millions of people all over or maybe it's just the people up front, I don't know. That line was pretty good. I would like to know how this show, in a show, works. Like, to be honest, it's an interesting concept. I can make everyone hate him all at once! <laughs> oh. Fitzpatrick sends Patrick back in time and then starts insulting everyone in the audience. And it makes everyone mad except Slappy, who likes being abused. Patrick's from every timeline. I'm not done ruining Patrick's life! That was a pretty cool resolution, and it didn't feel very forced with the callbacks, since it was Patrick from other dimensions after all. <laughs> Everyone is happy since there was ice cream in the ship, and then the episode ends with Fitzpatrick trying to ruin the life of the barbarian Patrick in the fantasy timeline. They'll all hate you. Friends, strangers, even your own parents. Kinda ass episode. I just don't like stories like this. Well, hi everybody. So this one follows the Patrick Star family pets, which is a nice change of pace. The narrator is Rube from the main show, who we saw like two episodes ago. Uh, they like using him a lot now. <laughs> they have nothing but fun! <laughs> the start of this episode is uh, such brain rot, legit a uh, YouTube kids show. I mean, there is a toilet. <laughs> ah, bluefish! I have to use the downstairs bathroom! Grandpa slips and flies down, breaking the downstairs toilet, so now the whole family has to vacate while a plumber fixes it. Downstairs toilet is the broken one. He only hears the sounds of a toilet flushing. The plumber restrains the toilet with the other two pets inside and he goes driving off to the dump. <laughs> Bro, use words. Patrick screams at everyone to come look as they see the other toilet, thinking it's Tinkle who's dead. <laughs> The dump looks good. I like the different colors for the sky. Lots of good backgrounds in this show, to be honest. That old junkyard worm didn't like to be disturbed when he was napping. The junkyard worm is really cool. It don't look like something from SpongeBob. It looks uh, straight out of Primal. The junkyard worm pops out and almost eats them, but they escape and slide uh, right into the fence. The worm comes back up and starts crying, running away from the dump as the pets also escape in a great shot. That junkyard rumble led to some rumblings in their tumblings. They go inside and are immediately thrown out by the goofy goober guy, I think. Don't they look real similar? After destroying half the store, they are about to pay, except they can't pay since they have no money, so they just steal it. They made it! That was pretty based. Now they go outside and eat all their stolen goods before walking down the street and being looked at by everyone. Did this episode have a higher budget or something? I feel like it just flows a lot better with the visuals especially. Rescue! I never got a 
chance to thank him or tell him this isn't my baby. I actually don't hate the concept as much as I thought I would. Yes, there is barely any dialogue, except for the narrator, but at least it's somewhat entertaining. Our heroes were so exhausted from saving babies! The jungle scene also looks great. Backgrounds are just amazing in this episode. Big shout out to the team responsible for that. Hiya, fellas! Ooh, I really like that. It was actually very creepy and executed surprisingly well. It's also cool that the narrator of the episode intervenes. We're all just too tired to see it, but your house is right next door! So now they're back, uh, but they rushed right into their own funeral. Or just a funeral for the toilet, I guess the family didn't really care for the other two. If you sprinkle when you tinkle, be a sweetie, wipe the CD. Everyone is sad except Grandpat, who screams that they're talking about the toilet before being shushed by everyone. You know you're talking about a toilet! I like these guys coming out of people's hairs and clothes here. Is that the hoopla guy on the bottom right? Whoever flushed! <laughs> it's still a toilet! Everyone flushes Tinkle's gravestone before the free pets are revealed. Yet again, it's only Tinkle they care about. He was the only one confirmed to be dead, I guess, or that they thought was dead. Did they just think the two others escaped, or...? Tinkle? What are you doing here? You get back in your grave right now! <laughs> this one was actually pretty good, I'm surprised. I still don't like Patrick's new family though. Coming back to the show, I also don't dislike the concept of Patrick doing his shenanigans in front of a live audience outside his house. Patrick is not doing too good in there, and it looks like he's done for, but turns out he made it out and rides in on an ice cream. Slappy pops out of the sewer to yap about loving destruction. I don't know, him being in the main show so much has soured my opinion of him, I think. Of the guest host! Oh, is the guest host ice cream? I love ice cream. Sadly, it's not ice cream, but his mother. Um, she's gonna dance with dust or something. I really don't care. I don't know why they're booing. I love toilet humor. We know, bro. Now Squidina needs a new guest host and Squidward walks in because having three shows with the same cast and not much difference is great. Patrick's dad is just a worse Patrick and the rest of his family are just worse in general. If Patrick lived alone in this house, I would have preferred it to be honest. The pets can stay, they're alright. You call yourself a fisherman? They are your modern doodads. Legit, I once again don't care. This show has potential, and I don't think these imposters are a part of that potential, sadly. I also want Patrick. At least rather than the others. I'm not saying he's a peak character in 2024 or... Was this 2023? Maybe even 2022. Whenever this came out, but he's a lot better than this. Huh? Huh? Finally! I mean, Granny Tentacles! Granny Tentacles called out Sponge Boomers in an earlier episode, so she's my op. Also, she's old, and modern SpongeBob really likes making its old characters unlikable for some reason. Granny Tentacles! Zombie. She does the zombie makeover thing, which is probably the most interesting thing someone has done yet in this episode, but that's not saying much. Everyone goes up to try and do something interesting. We see Auchi and the family of whatever this animal is called, it's like a bug uh, from earlier in the season. Yeah. 
To be fair, it's modern Patrick, all you need to do is laugh uncontrollably, maybe scream a little, and then say something stupid. Hi, I'm Patrick, and my favorite color is 12! Good enough. She goes up on scene and bombs by not being as captivating as Patrick despite hurting herself a lot. Maybe that's saying something. Everyone goes inside and starts acting like idiots, which causes Slappy to become aroused or something. I don't know what his deal is. We cut to the next day with Patrick being back in action, juggling the zombie parts and being modern Patrick in general. A <laughs> <laughs> what did I say bro? He's a toddler, no matter if he's a toddler or not. Why are there free shows with this guy being the exact same and appearing in all free? Wait, why, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> this one was very not good. I don't like many of the characters that played a part here, just bring back the pets. Starting off an episode of the Patrick Star Show with Squidward is one of the decisions of all time. This keeps going for a while before they remember that uh, butts. Trouble in Shell City. This would have made for a great thumbnail if I did a like singular episode review for this season. This guy never pays. Yeah, ta, ta, ta. Oh boy! At least they are keeping the consistency with Squidward's beef with Patrick's dad. Like, keeping continuity in this show is commendable. I'll hit you back! <laughs> Squidward tries again and gets all of his limbs cut off, and um, now he gotta go back home since his grandma is screaming at him. Squidward, you're my favorite grandson. Probably because you're my only grandson. She tells him that he's a tentacle and that the tentacles don't uh, let anyone step on them. There was your great uncle, Tentacles the Hump. <laughs> Seeing Squidward's relatives is cool. The art in this show is often the best part, and I like the designs we see here. Your gangster cousin. We see Squidward's granny when she was younger and she tells him that she's gonna help him get his money. Some very unfunny sequences ensue involving family members. Um, they get washed and turn into a big ball that Patrick plays with. I don't know what to say, um, I'm not really liking this episode too much. It's a tight one. No one can find me here in the upstairs bedroom. We see there's a lot of stairs up there, so Granny drives Squidward like a motorbike to get up. You'll never catch me! Why that slippery simple tight? Squidward gets licked by the toilet, and then they go down the stairs to try and catch whatever bro's name is, Patrick's dad, um, Cecil, Cecil Star. These stars have never ever paid for a newspaper delivered by a tentacle! It's kinda cool seeing the tradition of the stars not paying the tentacles. Uh, Grandpa at Lord Drops, I think. But Granny Tentacles isn't gonna quit! I oughta know, she's my girlfriend. They were sitting together in, I think, the mid-season finale, but I totally forgot that they were dating. <laughs> I think I have an idea! Back to Patrick, please. Like, get these two out. Squidward gets paid with paper mache money, which melts. There's one smart pierogi! That's why he's Granny's little sugar pants! Get me out, bro. 
The episode ends with Squidina reading the magazine, which shows what happened in this uh, very not good episode. Everything is ice cream! <laughs> the art in this show is so good. I really wish I found the show funnier. It's honestly better than modern SpongeBob right now. Patrick! Patrick drools everywhere, which gives Guidina the idea to host a show where she swims around in his own saliva. <laughs> Patrick drowns the whole house. Obligatory comment here about how they're already underwater, but I guess drool is a different density. Is this the episode where Patrick can't stop drooling? Yeah, seen it! I am not even gonna try to understand the lore of this show. Are they doing a rerun live? <laughs> Is this whole second half of the season just the house getting ruined? We see Perch Perkins' great grandmother, which is very important for the lore of the eventual video I will make about Pro. Patrick starts drowning in the entire ocean, and now he has to go to a doctor as they see an ad on the TV. Is your sink sick? Is your commode feeling queasy? Then let me- Matter of fact, where did the ads go? It has been two years since I have seen the first half of this season, but I remember liking the segments with Plankton and the Chum Bucket and stuff. Take it, take a the plumbing guy pops up in real life and uh, stops the toilet. I forgot his name, I know Ouchie is the pointy guy, but I don't know what the toilet is called. Fake Spongebob fan confirmed. Enjoy the urinal cake, my little tinkle. Wait, is that not their toilet? How many rabid living toilets are there in this universe? Patrick is stuck like this! <laughs> hey! Oh, can't stop him! And then the episode ends with the segment of the Bikini Bottom Fire Department and Patrick. The ending was pretty funny. Not gonna lie, pretty good. Legit, what is going on? Thought I was watching the wrong show for a second, but it turns out it's uh, about to make sense. Nah, this is super cool. It's really dark. Um, I know they are food, but like fish are food too. So this is just Patrick's imagination of how it's all going down, and we see outside the prisoners from Inmates of Summer who are not looking impressed. Every episode of this show is just destruction. Now their whole house is gonna get destroyed and Grandpat is still inside. Leave him. Their house is a chicken now for some reason and it runs away. That's kinda cool I guess. Grandpat's old ass finally wakes up inside as the family chases the chicken down. I'm so sad they didn't run him over. Perkins, at the annual Bikini Bottom Race of way too many cyclists! Why is every fish the exact same type of fish? Is this some deep social commentary on cyclists or what? The contestants are taking a new course this year! Huh? <laughs> I like the concept of them racing inside a house, it could honestly have been explored some more. Also, this art style is kinda weird right here. So that pinball machine joke wasn't even original in I Love Hoops. I mean that entire plot was a Mervyn Man and Barnacle Boy ripoff, so I'm not surprised. My 
Patrick's face before running Fred over is just nightmare fuel, bro is legit from Meat Canyon. The my eggs jokes was actually one of the best modern versions of that joke, like I'm a hater but could have been worse. My fellow Hamdonians, he is the pointy maw! The end of the episode was kind of confusing, it means Patrick actually did eat all of those sentient beings in the beginning. SPF 900? Well, that's pretty good. Can we deport this guy back to Transylvania? I'm so tired of bro. Him and Slappy have been in like half of the episodes I have reviewed of season 14 already. Golly, then I must be one handsome devil. <laughs> Rube got like 10 jobs in this show. I have no problem with him being in this show though. His uh, first appearance was with uh, Patrick in the main show anyway. For us today. Well, I brought you some amazing alien animals. I mean, continuity out the window, of course, but unlike Fraud Coral, I can put that aside a bit more with this show. It's just brain rot. <laughs> that is horrifying. Like, actually made me a bit uncomfortable. Amazing! Did not quite like Space Ruby eating that alien thing. Patrick's line asking if he could eat one was cannibal right though. Hello. And now it's loose in your house. I hate spiders. The idea of Patrick becoming an alien space hunter is nice though, and I like the little intro they give him. Patrick Star, alien space hunter. Not sold whatsoever on Patrick's mom. Squidina is alright in this show, Patrick needs someone to play off of, but the other three are just not for me. You're toast. This is one of the things I like the most about this show. It's just so nonsensical to the point where they can kinda do anything. Endless potential, although a lot of it has been wasted in the first season. What rubs? Ow. Ow. Can't be a modern SpongeBob episode without some feet mentions. Honestly, very proud of them not giving him a realistic foot for that. But which chair are you? Patrick starts enacting police brutality against the chairs and somehow loses to one of them. He gotta be schizophrenic or something, why did his emotions change like so fast? <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Turns out the table was the spider all along. Well, well, well. How the turntables... Uh, don't eat me! I'm too dumb to die! <laughs> Bitch ass spider. Squidina starts telling him to transform into different stuff fast. I saw that coming from 600 miles away, but it's a concussion at least. Wait, it's not a concussion, it's a conclusion at least. Patrick is just eating everyone in this show. And he falls out of bed since it's upside down on the roof. And the next logical step of course is to tear his head off. Or not. Time for plan B. He throws his head in a basket and then gets uh, ready to beat himself to sleep. However, he has no aim. Warmer. Warmer. His body runs to the kitchen to beat up his fake mom. Uh, I'm in support of that. Unfortunately, he gets hungry and changes his mind. I just finished your makeup. <laughs> the mom starts talking about having a dream once, and then some unfunny dialogue ensues between uh, her and Patrick. Wait, I dreamed of winning races. I dreamed of becoming a race car. I can't even tell if this is going like away from the plot because I can't even tell what the plot of the episode is. 
Be a race car! A race car driver, not a race car! Did we really need that clarification? I love having jokes explained to me. Patrick charges up the dimension door and goes to Klopnod 30 years ago. You're meant for better things! I'm your son! From the future! She don't believe him until uh, he tells her uh, her favorite color is purple, which convinces her, and I'm surprised he even remember that. Or is it just because she is purple, maybe? Car? Of course not! You're gonna race that car! Okay! She of course loses and Patrick is bummed out, saying they have a lot of work to do as they reuse a track I'm not approving of. Not in any way saying that track belongs to Spongebob, but using such an iconic track from the show for a generic montage is not it in my opinion. Nah, I know I said earlier in this video that I can look past the continuity stuff, but a Spongebob comic? How would that even work? Bro is not working at the Krusty Krab, he is a teenager. <laughs> we did it! You're a race car! Funny win! She asks him if he's sure that this is what she told him uh, she wanted in the future, and he of course uh, is 100% sure. Not have gone better. <laughs> Hey, are we doing the show today or what? Ah, the Patterfly effect. I should probably have been able to figure that one out as soon as he started time traveling. Of wheels! So do you, dum dum. Ah! When did this happen? Patrick goes back in the time machine as we see that she is actually really happy as a street sweeper. Don't listen to me! Listen to me! This is a pretty cool concept, not gonna lie, but didn't they already do this in the main show? Don't ruin anything else! <laughs> Don't want to affect the future! He goes back as the fire starts, and now his house is on fire somehow. A little toasty for my taste. Let me try this again. He goes back in time multiple times as we get the montage of every time not working out. Attempts to fix the past later. Everything looks fine, but I know this plot, so there's definitely gonna be something super messed up here that he's gonna find out. What's breakfast? <laughs> he goes back yet again and finds out that the time closet is no longer a time closet, but instead the regular closet. <laughs> Work. That was kinda cute. It didn't work though, so now he has to get educated to be able to build the real one. <laughs> this montage is alright. It goes on for a while and he eventually gets his diploma and returns home with facial hair. <laughs> I'm not going in there! This would probably also mess up stuff, right? Like him telling him not to go to the future is gonna trigger some new butterfly effect. Well, how about some breakfast? We just had breakfast 15 minutes ago. They decide to use the time closet to go back 15 minutes and have breakfast, and then the episode ends like this. <laughs> Yay! This one was alright, I guess. Don't really think they did enough with the concept, like they did a lot of stuff, but I wasn't really feeling it. <laughs> Patrick spins them around to give them togas, and then throws them into the time closet, as he wants to invite all of his friends over. Unfortunately, Patrick accidentally sends them to space instead, where the 1000th annual weird alien contest is taking place. SpongeBob sits here, Pearl sits here, Elwood sits here, and Patrick. Why invent new characters when you can just use all the ones that are in the other show? Only invent characters to retcon already existing ones. Elwood! I didn't have time to get anything, so brought my dad's wallet. 
Spoke too soon, we got a new character. Patrick eats his wallet and then everyone sits down. We bring to the party. Yeah! Everybody! I forgot where these guys were from. I know they're from this show. Uh, I think it was Bunny the Barbarian, where Patrick's mom traveled to the fantasy dimension. I don't think we're remotely weird enough to win, hon. They try to wear the same toga to look two-headed, but get uh, discouraged when they see these guys. Thousandth annual weirdest alien contest! So this is the alien version of Gail Doppler, who is uh, a character in modern Spongebob. He's fine, I shouldn't hate on original characters after me hating so much on the returning ones. They do good in the Weird Smile competition. I would have given them a zero since this reminds me way too much of Sandy's Not in Isis. My goat. He wins, and now it's time for the second round, but first we cut back to the Viking invaded party. Aight, but where are all these guys coming from? It was cool in that one scene a few episodes ago, cause they all spawned in from the time closet. Did that happen again? Oh, up, Chief Pat. Bro is using his party to get freaky. Grand Pat comes home, and I think we are in for a very obvious joke. Bro in a party! Yo, I've seen this without inviting me joke so many times, it's just like I I saw it coming the second he stepped in. Now it's the party. Nah, Ren's too fake in double minus F tier. If you know, you know. Tons of old people spawn into the party and we cut back to space. A delicious dish using the same common ingredient, a shrunken human! Nah, that's crazy. One of the aliens get ready to cut this human up, but is allergic to humans, so he's out of the competition. Hands up, chef. <laughs> Let's see. The human is still swimming around in the soup, but the judge just eats all of it and gives it a thumbs down. Voila! The human pukes on the third human, and they get a thumbs down as well. And then modern Spongebob stuff happens. I'm delicious. I don't know bro. The human wins anyway, and gets eaten as well, um, as Patrick's dad tries to drown himself in their soup. They lose their togas, and we get this close-up of the two. Of course, this is enough to win the weird alien competition. Wait! There are more of you? Get me in! I would not let you in either. Everyone gets beamed up as we see Bubble Bass hug his lasered butt. Kinda had a house party while you guys were gone. Are you mad? Of course they aren't. Why would they even be mad in the first place? Winning contest or not, they are not exactly strict. Not digested yet! Let's party! <laughs> this one was like an episode of the Patrick Star Show. Time's up everyone! Put down your ladles! I know Nick was foaming at the mouth for a chance to finally put the real school into the show. At least it's Guidina who's here and failing. Uh. Aren't you gonna try it? You tried all my other- We see her iron his head and vacuum his old body off before he tries her dish and us cutting to an ambulance. Um, I think, think they've done that in the show before. I poisoned my home ec teacher again. Happens to the best of us. We see she got A plus in everything except for home ec where she is dying or maybe the teacher. Me as you 
She's now gonna do home ec on the Patrick Star show while Patrick runs uh, the cameras. Surely that will work out. The magic of cinema! Uh, <laughs> Patrick at least points the camera in the right direction before running through the wall to make sure her teacher can watch from the hospital. I'm here to show you some great home economic techniques that are worth a C minus at least! Why is it called home economics if you're not doing economics? You're cooking food. Are you being economical while buying the food or what? Patrick should always be behind the scenes to be honest. She tries throwing Grandpat out, but when it don't work, they change the title to add him as a special guest. And fight! Next episode, please. The teacher feels the same as he has now woken up, but gets a heart attack from watching this. And lucky for your show, I was my high school's country placing champion. I just don't like you, man. Can we get the real parents back and execute Grandpat or something? Squidina can go as well, to be honest. She's just the least bad of them. Chair fork, double fork, invisible fork. Many, many, many forks later. The table goes far outside the house as Patrick rolls all the way down while recording. Fork? But this is a spoon! Fork! Squidina succeeds and I'm just so happy for her. And that's how you place all the forks in Dad! He gets another very justified heart attack and we see Squidina learning how to saw and some other stuff. This gotta be someone's fetish, like there's just way too much of this stuff in Modern Spongebob. And yes, this is Modern Spongebob, it's not very different. <gasps> that was mother's favorite. You look like you could use some advice. Slappy actually having plot relevancy is a welcome surprise. Or not really, like I don't care about her <laughs> pie or whatever she's making, I hope she fails. Give the doll a toy. Now break that toy! Break it good! He really is just a poor man's Ren. I know now they're both inspired by Peter Lore, but Ren is just better in every way. <laughs> she pushes his soul back in, and then she notices a lot of the stuff she used in the show in the hospital, so now she does stuff. This stuff is just gross. She sews him up and he wakes up feeling well and realizing she saved his life. All is well except he is allergic to gluten and swells up. And that was that episode. It wasn't the worst episode I guess. Life under the sea is beautiful but often savage of its own body in order to it. Don't give me feral friends flashbacks, that's deadass one of the worst episodes of the whole show. Develop its prey. Ew, gross, but... Patrick pops his stomach out and it starts eating stuff before he gets it back inside to answer the door. This is little Andy. Strict diet, kelp only, nutritional supplement, study material. She screams at him to not overstimulate Andy as Patrick starts to call him Blandy. Can't blame him, I had to rewind to get his name. Just have fun instead! <laughs> what is... fun? If it's for friends who do stuff together, you is for you and me. And it's for anywhere and anytime at all down here in the deep blue sea. Patrick screams and goes into a coma because Andy don't know what fun is. And of course Spongebob breaks in as he sees an opportunity to redo a classic episode. Kid is a blank slate! Ah, we get to teach him what fun is! That's me when I meet someone who don't have an opinion on Spongebob so I can convert them into becoming Spongeboomers. Fun! They start doing shenanigans which are very fun. Blandy is depressed out of his mind and might also be on something. Uh, bro is not looking too well. My turn! 
After electrocuting themselves, SpongeBob and Patrick see Blandy having uh, TV eyes. I think it's called like Bug War or something. There's a bird outside my window. See you next week, same time. We can't just give up on him. Ice cream don't work, Mervin Man don't work, and TV don't work. Patrick called it Idiot Box, and I honestly can't tell if that's a reference or not, since it really seems like the writers have watched like half of every other old episode when making these references. Found it! Whee! That gotta be a crime. It's just a white empty dimension in there. I swear, if they do the whole alone thing, I will crash out. Right under us. <laughs> I found that kind of funny, I don't know why. Spongebob finds Blandy's imagination door, which is locked down. <laughs> Gotta have bagel with your luck. They open the door and awaken all the fun in him as they pop out with a rainbow and unicorns. He keeps doing that and just spawning in stuff and switching their body types and stuff and then he starts ruining the house a little bit. <laughs> this should be the poster for this show, it would be pretty accurate. The mom returns and hear them on the other side having fun. Blandy's mom is here and we haven't even tutored him yet! We were supposed to tutor him? They start screaming anti-fun stuff, like math and things, which makes everything melt as the mom desperately tries to get in. Gone. Fun, fun, fun. Spongebob tells Patrick they have to go back into Blandy's head and cut it off at the source. They try closing the door and uses Patrick's stomach to puke up the locks as the mom breaks in. What is going on in here? Absolutely nothing. We just sat on the floor quietly for about 11 minutes. Because the episode is 11 minutes. Blandy is depressed again. Um, a win, I guess, as Patrick gets paid a quarter and she calls him Squidward because that's who was supposed to tutor him. Andy, what do you say we go home and fold some laundry? Then the episode ends with Patrick shouting to Blandy to have fun, which activates his door as he's now about to go boom. <laughs> this one was alright, at least it was creative. Most episodes are a lot more creative than the main show right now, but this one especially. And we're actually ending on an alright episode. I was gonna do the whole rest of season 1 in this video, but I am suspecting it's gonna be like over an hour already, so yeah, I can't edit for shit, so one more part I guess, of season 1.